Hello folks, welcome back, Samuel Golden again. In today's episode of How to Become a Pilot, we are talking about expanding your skills and your first solo cross-country adventure. Let's get started. Now that your first solo is behind you, you will train for more advanced scenarios that you may encounter as a private pilot. For example, if you soloed at a quiet airfield, your CFI may take you to a busier airport for more solo practice. This helps you gain experience with air traffic control and more aircraft in your airspace. You'll also work on specialty takeoffs and landings. Short field takeoffs and landings, like the name implies, simulate dealing with a short runway as well as obstacles. While soft field takeoffs and landings mimic conditions like a dirt or a grass runway. They both require special techniques and they are both a lot of fun. You'll then learn the basics of how to fly the airplane without looking outside, believe it or not, known as flying by instruments. You may choose to work on a full instrument rating at a later date, but for now, the FAA wants you to have a basic knowledge of how to keep the airplane under control in the clouds if you enter them by accident. This training gives you options in an emergency, so it's very important. Next, you'll learn how to navigate. GPS is a great place to start and is incredibly user-friendly, but you'll want to become an expert on the model installed in your airplane. You may also learn how to use VORs, which stands for, wait for it, Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Radio Range. Oh, let's just call them VORs. VORs are less intuitive, but no problem. King Schools has some great free videos on YouTube about how to master them. They're actually really popular, but check them out on the screen and in the description. You'll also learn how to navigate by looking outside the landmarks and using speed, time, and course from your last position to determine your current location. These old school techniques are a lot of fun, but more importantly, they are tools you will use to remain intuitively aware of your position anytime you're flying. In addition to navigation, you'll learn what it's like to fly at night. Night flying is a real joy. It's my personal favorite. The air is smoother, the radio is quieter, and other airplanes are actually easier to see. However, finding airports can be challenging, especially in bright metropolitan areas, and there are some additional special skills for flying at night that you'll need to learn. Last, you'll experience some emergency training. Emergencies rarely happen, but being prepared is crucial. Training for these rare events gives you the confidence to handle unexpected situations should they occur. Finally, it's cross-country time, baby. The FAA defines, defines a cross-country as a flight that is more than 50 nautical miles from your point of origin. Said another way, you're going on a trip. Before you leave, though, cross-countries require a lot of careful planning and risk management. You'll need to account for weather, the route, the airports you may visit, weight and balance, and more. This is perfect practice for when you're a fully certificated pilot and you want to go on a flying vacation, which is a real treat, by the way. To start, you'll fly some cross-country flights with your instructor, one during the day and then the other at night. Then, once you're ready, it's time to plan and fly your first solo cross-country. Personally, this is one of my favorite memories from my private pilot training. During a solo cross country, you'll have plenty of time to settle in and enjoy the magnitude of what you're doing as you cruise to your destination. You'll enjoy this flight a lot. Okay, that's it for today. Next week, I will share some great tips for getting the most out of your training and performing your best for your upcoming check ride. I'll see you then.